Harry Neave was an eminent backbench Tory MP. He was respected for his gallant war record and for serving as a lawyer at the Nuremberg Trials. He believed the Britain he had fought for was being destroyed. During that period, the 70s, um, Harry Neave undoubtedly felt, as many of us did of that generation at that time in the House of Commons, that the values which saw us through the war were slipping away in the same sense as it was all under threat when we fought our war. I think the thing was that we'd been through a war and I think we could see the dangers more easily than those who hadn't. I think, I think this was the thing, really. I think this is why perhaps we were more prominent than others, trying to uh, make people realize that these were very da real dangers which existed. Neve was not alone. Many of his generation had a romantic picture of Britain. Its history was somehow different from the rest of the world. This Britain, they were convinced, had to be defended. Well, we knew that uh, Great Britain uh, had led the world morally. We had always been the moral leaders of the world, I think. And our values were the right values. And it seemed to us that uh, the wrong values were being imposed. In other words, thuggery instead of common sense and things like that. And we wanted to combat it. Some of the Colditz generation even set up private militias a network of retired military officers who would take over the running of the country if law and order collapsed. I think it has to be available just as, as we had a home guard during my war. We need people there to fight or do whatever is necessary, build boats, drive cars or trains, but be available in any form of emergency. I, I've never been very good at pushing myself in matters of this kind, and just out of the blue, Eddie came to me one day in the House of Commons and said, um, have you got anyone organizing your campaign? I said, good heavens, no. Organizing it, you don't push yourself, it's a matter for other people. And he said, well, I think I'd better take it over then, don't you? And I said, well, I'd be delighted. Just like that. Now, I understand that you ran a very discreet uh, campaign, what's been described as a kind of Colditz campaign on behalf of uh, Mrs. Thatcher, so that Mr. Heath's camp didn't really know what had hit them until it was too late. Is that true? I think it's entirely true. Uh, I think it was very important with a new candidate uh, when the establishment of the Conservative Party were um, organizing in support of the leader, which was very proper for them to do, that I should run a very discreet campaign among the backbenches. And we did this quietly and discreetly. It resembles Colditz in the sense that one had to be careful what one was doing. She won it. And on the second ballot, she won it. By which time, she and Erin Eve had become great friends. But he was another kind of, uh, not an icon figure exactly, but totally sympathetic to her political philosophy. I, uh, sorry. Yeah. Now, I suspect what he saw was something very close to, again, the values which we've been trying to describe. Margaret Thatcher was someone who appreciated the greatness of this country and believed in it. Airy Neve felt uh, that she held the same views of patriotism which he believed in himself. I think he saw that in her. And he was right. For me, there is no choice. I do not intend to be the first woman prime minister of a mediocre and declining Britain. Chris Patton and I were working on uh, a speech for her in the room actually overlooking the, the, the car park. It was in the uh, opposition leader's set of rooms. And uh, we were working away and there was a sudden bang and I looked up and and Chris said, uh, I think that was a bomb. And I said, oh, I don't think so. It was probably a car backfiring. Well, it was a car, but it wasn't backfiring. Chris pulled the curtains too rapidly and said, don't go near the curtains. It is a bomb. No one knew who it was, but then they checked the, the uh, registration number. And of course, it turned out to be airy. She wasn't there at the time. She'd been off opening a fate somewhere out of London. 
Airy Neve had been assassinated by the newly formed Irish National Liberation Army. When Mrs. Thatcher appointed Neve opposition spokesman on Northern Ireland, he had promised tough new measures if the Conservatives won the general election. The political wing of the INLA was the Irish Republican Socialist Party. Neve would have been a person of, uh, um, who would have been perceived to have been a, cons a considerable threat and would have, seen, would have been perceived to have been somebody of, uh, if he had ever become Secretary of State, would have transformed the situation. A person who was saying things about the Irish people, about internment, about, um, about bringing back the death penalty for people engaged in what he called terrorist acts in Ireland. Then, of course, he suddenly became a person of some significance in Ireland. He appeared, anyway, on the, on the face of it, to represent that, that, that new force in, 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 in the Tory party, that kind of reactionary view of a lower middle class losing its base of support, losing its power, um, attempting to grasp again that element of power that it felt it should have had, that it perhaps felt it was entitled to after the Second World War, um, which was, um, which I think perhaps Margaret Thatcher certainly represented and, uh, and perhaps manifested itself to some degree in this new heroic figure that, uh, that was presented to um, the Irish people in the shape of Airy Neve. Your people remember him for a lot of things, perhaps most of all for the fact that he got out of coal bits. They don't remember him so much for the many kindnesses he did. Really a person, a wonderful person, of tremendous inner strength. And just one more thing. Some devils loved him. And they must never, never, never be allowed to triumph. They must never prevail. Those of us who believe in the things that Airy fought for will see that our views are the ones which continue to live on in this country.